Hi everyone, this is E, the Empty Nester. Today I'm going to create a log of um, information from the seeds or the plants that I've grown this year for the Experimental Farm Network. Um, what they do is send you seeds. For, some of them are rare, some of them aren't quite so rare. There are um, some that are one of a kind. And um, the purpose is to repopulate the seed bank, or he's created a seed bank, you know, so that we can keep heirloom seeds alive and fresh and pure. And um, today I'm going to show the rest of what I've harvested. Uh, this is about all that's left of the Bushentino beans. And these took, um, I planted them in May. and. Um, they handled all kinds of rain this year and lack of sun, but when the heat hit, they came alive. And I have 11 plants here on the fence line, so 11 seeds um, did sprout and grow. And um, I'll show you the results of what I've collected in the house. The average, um, let me bring you over here. Okay, down here, the trunk size on this is um, close to a little over a half inch, close to three quarters of an inch. And it, um, I can't measure the exact vine, but it's probably 10 feet, 12 feet in some parts. This bean right here is eight inches, and I've had them um, Let's see, this one's nine, nine and a half, you know, 10, 12 inches. The pods have been anywhere from six seeds to 24 seeds. This one's about nine and a half. So they're averaging nine and a half inches long. And let's see, that one's about eight. And then the leaf size, anywhere about three and a half inches by five inches for an average, but there's been some that on the other side that are gone now that were pretty big. And um, this thing flourishes in heat. If it were um, to continue to be warm, see right here, or I hope you're seeing right here, there's a leaf, uh, not a leaf, a flower getting ready to start. And then right there, more flowers getting ready to start. And this thing would continue on growing if I could continue to have warm weather. And then right now, the seed pod, this one's pretty good size with, let's see. Almost... One, two, three. I'm not good with the fractions here. Two, four. That's a quarter plus two. Almost a half inch. And with... Where's the majority? Maybe a quarter inch on the pods. But it, grows up and over the fence line. What started out um, about four feet, this plant ended up crawling down that way another four feet, so it took about eight foot width. And I'm averaging um, space-wise, I planted them kind of close together, where if I do it again, it will be, you know, like they ended up. Um, see, here's one. Two, these two are too close together. I think I put um, every couple inches where I would give these at least six feet, six inches to 12 inches apart because of the mass size that they produce. All these purple stems here. And the stem is purple and green. It's a really pretty stem. Here's the harvest totals for seeds on the um, Bushentino beans, these right here. 
I've got three pounds ten point six zero ounces. Okay, I'm going to clear it for the weight on the um, Black Colt Runner Beans. One point, where is that? Yeah, 1.75 ounces. It took a lot to get that amount. And then the, um, oh, I can't remember what they were called. Dwarf Gray Runner, no. The Dwarf Gray Sugar Peas. Uh, 0.70 ounces. Drop them. Let me clear this. Okay, these are the Plum Lemon Tomatoes, 0.06 ounces. Okay, here we are at the German Lunchbox. Like, um, these came with it, and as you can see, they're kind of like German Lunchbox size. And these are still producing right here. I've got a blackberry mixed in here. But here's another um, Plum Lemon. So even though they're not very productive, um, or they're waiting till now to be productive. Look at this bunch right here. If the weather holds out, you know, this will be the most that this plant's had all summer. But this is not something that I would um, consider regrowing myself. It's isn't productive enough and I didn't get to taste it where you know maybe I'll take this one in and taste it but with this um, year's growing session what I've learned is um, you know with the rain you know in a way I kind of feel like a failure but it wasn't my fault that um, the grain seed, the um, crambi and the um, quinola and um, can't remember the other one. Um, they failed, you know, they stayed dwarfed, you know, short to the ground and then um, they finally drowned. They couldn't take it anymore so I'm not sure if I'm going to try growing, regrowing them again next year or not. I saved a little bit of the seed. But um, they're not the only things that failed in my garden. The corn failed this year, and except for a little bit I put in containers that's ready to harvest shortly for seed. And um, let's see, what else? Those guys right there are getting ready to bloom again on that plant. And again, this isn't um, the this one, I don't think until I see production. If I had more growing time, I would get more tomatoes off of them. Here's one that fell on the ground. These guys off the ground here. See, I still have one last watermelon, actually two, you know, if temperatures can hold out, you know, surprise watermelons still growing. Okay, now I've cut the plum lemon tomato in half, and the one that was um, not the plum lemon, and 
you can see that they're not the same interior, but kind of. They're different shapes. They both have seed cavities on each side of a center. And if you just do it like this, and like this, you can get the seed out really easy. And there's not a lot of seed in here. Let me go ahead and taste it. Ah, nothing special. But let me taste this one. Kind of wangy. Now, I'll make sure no seeds are in my hand. This one seems to have a lot more seeds. This one's not too bad. You know, it's comparable. Size-wise, you know, this is a lot more seeds than that one. But I'll go ahead and close for now. Thanks for watching.